Let's now talk about some formulas. The first formula is called the addition rule, and it's a formula for finding or probabilities. So probability of A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. So that's where the, uh, the name addition comes from, minus the probability of A and B. Now notice that we already know how to find or probabilities without using a formula at all. In the last lecture, I asked for something like probability of San Francisco or train. And the way we found it in the last lecture was we first started by taking all the San Francisco numbers, which is 5, 9, 15, and then we added on the train numbers, but keeping in mind not to count anything twice. So we only added on the 15 and the 6, because the 9 we already counted when we did the San Francisco numbers. All right, that's how we found the or probabilities in the last lecture. So what this formula is saying is that if we wanted probability of San Francisco or train, it says take all the San Francisco numbers, plus all the train numbers, and notice that I counted the nine twice, and now subtract off the probability of San Francisco and train. So San Francisco and train, remember the word and means at the same time, San Francisco and train at the same time refers to the nine. So all this minus probability of A and B part is doing is it's subtracting off the thing that we counted twice. Okay, and that's where this formula comes from. The next one is called the multiplication rule, which we also already talked about in the last lecture, and we used it to find uh, the probability of picking two people, right? We said picking one person and then picking a second person. And the way we did that was we ended up with two fractions that are multiplied together. So this first one is exactly the, the same multiplication rule that we talked about in the last lecture. The second one, all I did was I swapped the B and A. Okay, so I replaced A with B and B with A, and you get the second formula. And the reason why I need that second one is because and the, the order doesn't matter. Okay, so A and B is the same thing as B and A. So on the left side, these two are actually the same. But on the right side, we have conditional probability. So for conditional probability, the one that has the, the line or the word given, the order does matter. Right, so P of B given A is different than P of A given B. So depending on the problem, sometimes you need the first one, sometimes you need the second one. Last set of formulas that we'll need is called the rule of complements. Um, so if E represents it rains today, the complement, remember, just add on the word not, so the complement would mean it does not rain today. And all these two formulas are saying is that if you know one of them, do one minus and you'll get the other one. That's all these two are saying. When would we use those formulas? Well, we would use those formulas when we're not given a table and we're just given the probabilities like we are here. So suppose that probability of G is 0.45, probability of H is 0.15, probability of G given H is 0 0.70, find the following quantities. So I'll need the formulas on a previous page. And really I just need the first three. Now, these formulas are written with A's and B's. My question here is asking about G and H's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these formulas, these three formulas, with G's and H's. So I'm going to replace the G, the A with G, and the B with H. Okay, and the three formulas I'll get, I'm going to write up here. So the first one is the addition one, so that's probably with G or H is equal to probability of G plus probability of H minus the probability of G and H. And all I did was I replaced the A with G, the B with H. Okay, that's the first one, which is the addition rule. The second one is going to be the multiplication rule, the first one. So I replaced the A with G and the B with H. So that's going to give me probability of G and H equals the probability of G times the probability of H given G. So be careful, make sure you have everything in the right order. So the way I remember it is it's, if I want G and H, then it's going to be G, H, G. So it's going to alternate. G, H, G. And then the third formula that I'll need is going to be 
the second version of the multiplication rule where the, uh, the, the letters are switched. So the third one I'm going to use is, I'll write that down here. So I'll just switch the G and H. So that's H and G equals, then it's going to go H, G, H. So alternate. H, G, given H. Okay, and that's all we need for the rest of this uh, question here. Part A is asking for probability of G and H. Okay, question is which formula do you use? First, second, or third? So which ones have G and H in them? The first one does, right? I see a G and H there. The second one does also. And the third one also does because remember I said the, for ands, the order doesn't matter. So H and G is the same thing as G and H. So all three formulas have G and H in them, okay? So that doesn't help us because we're trying to figure out which one to use. Well, can we use the first one? So the first one, probably of G and H is here. In order to use the first one, we would need to know everything else in, in the formula, okay? So G and H, do I know probably of G? Yes, I know it's 0.45. Do I know probably of H? Yes. I know it's 0.15. Do I know probably G or H? No, right? So I'm not given that. I'm giving just regular G, regular H, and then G given H. So formula one is no good because I don't know everything else that I need, right? I know probably G, I know probably H, but I don't know this G or H. It's not given to me in a problem. So one is no good. Can I use two? So probably G and H, that's right here. In order to use this formula, I would need to know the other two things or everything else in the formula. Do I know probably of G? Yes, 0.45. Do I know probably of H given G? No, I know G given H, but that's not the same as H given G. So I don't know this H given G, which means I can't use two. So the only one I can use is this last one. Uh, do I know probably of H? Yes. Do I know probably G given H? Yes, also, which means the third one's gonna be useful. So I'm gonna use the third one. Let me recopy it. Left side, probably H and G, that's actually what I'm looking for. So let me just call that the whole thing X equals probability of H. Do I know that? Yes, it's 0.15. So this entire thing is 0.15. There's a multiplication there. G given H, what is probably G given H? G given H is 0 0.70, so this entire thing is 0 0.70. And then our job is to get the X by itself. The X is already by itself on the left side which means all I need to do is just do that. So 0.15 times 0 0.70. 0 0.105. Okay, so what I just found was probably G and H is 0 0.105. Let me write that over here. Part B, probability of G or H. So look for a formula that has G or H in it. There's only one that has the or in it. That's the first one. So we have no choice but to use the first one. So let me recopy it. So it's gonna be G or H equals probability of G plus probability of H minus the probability of G in H. Okay, go through, fill stuff in. Probably G or H, that's actually exactly what I'm looking for. Let me call that X. I have an equals right here. P of G, probably of G. 
Do I know that? I do. I know it's 0.45. So that entire thing is 0.45. Plus probability of H. What's the probability of H? 0.15. So that entire thing is 0.15. Minus probability of G and H. What's the probability of G and H? Well, we just found it. And we said it was 0.105. So that goes there. Get the X by itself. The X is already by itself on the left side. So all we need to do is do the stuff on the right side. So that's just going to be 0.45 plus 0.15 minus 0 0.495. Okay, so what we just found was G or H. And that was 0 0.495. Part C, probability of H given G. Okay, so which formula has H given G? So this is conditional probability. The order does matter for, for these probabilities. So which one has H given G in that order? H given G. So three has G given H, that's not it. Two has H given G. So I think two is the only one that has H given G in that order, H given G. So we have to use two, so let me recopy two. So it's G and H equals probability of G times h given g, times probability h given g. Okay, so let's go through, fill stuff in. g and h. Do I know g and h? I do. So g and h is 0.105. So this entire thing is 0.105. Is it equals probability of G? Do I know that? Probability of G, I do know, is 0.45. And then there's a times there. Probability of H given G. That's actually what I'm looking for, right? Probability of H given G. So this entire thing, I'm going to replace with an X. And the job, your job, or our job, is to get the x by itself. So right now the x is not by itself, right, because it's multiplying the 0.45. So I need to get rid of the 0.45. How do you get rid of the 0.45? Right now it's multiplying the x. So to undo, to get rid of the 0.45, we're going to undo the multiplication. To undo a multiplication, we're going to divide. So we're going to divide both sides by 0.45. Right, so left side, we're just going to do that math, 0 0.45 divided, or 0 0.105 divided by 0 0.45, 0 0.105 divided by 0 0.45. Uh, round to three decimal places, that's 0 0.233. Right side, uh, 0 0.45 multiplying and then dividing by 0.45, that will cancel each other out, and you'll have just x. And now x is by itself, so we're done. So what we just found was probability of H given G. And we said that was 0 0.233. Part D, are G and H independent explained? So anytime I'm asking about independent or mutually exclusive, and I said explain, I want you to check one of those equations on the front page. So which one are we checking? We're talking about independent. Which one's independent? 
It's this one. So probability of A equals probably A given B. And because we're talking about G's and H's here, let me replace the A with G. And the B with uh, H. So the one we're checking is this one, probably of G equals probably of G given H. And all we need to do is figure out the left side, figure out the right side, and see if they're equal or not. So left side and right side, we should already know based on everything we've done already. Probably of G we know is 0.45. That's given to us in the problem. Right side, G given H, do we know that somewhere? It's not that, right? That's G given H, that's in the wrong order. So where do we know G given H? It's not that, that's an or, it's not that, that's an and, is it in the original problem? Yes, G given H, 0 0.70, G given H. 0.70. Question is, are those two things equal? No, they're not. So it's not equal. To answer the question, they're not independent. Part E, are G and H mutually exclusive? So once again, you're going to check one, one of those equations on the front page. Mutually exclusive would be this equation, P of A and B equals zero. And then we're talking about G and H in this question, so let me replace that with the correct letters, so that's G and H. Check left, check right. Left side, P of G and H. Okay, that should be something we've already done. So where's G and H? There it is, G and H, 0.105. Okay, that's the left side. The right side, the right side, there's nothing to do. It's just zero. Are those equal? No, they're not. So if it's not equal, then to answer the question, it's not mutually exclusive. Example three. So we're not given a table, we're just given the probabilities. Probability of C is 0.8, probability of D is 0.6, probability of C or D is 0.92. So we're going to have to use those, those formulas. So let me start by rewriting those three formulas, the addition rule and the two multiplication rules, uh, using the letters that are in this problem, so with C's and D's. So I'm, I'm going to replace the A and B with a C and a D. So three formulas we'll get is the first one is the addition rule one. So that one will we'll say probability of C or D is equal to probability of C plus probability of D minus the and, C and D. Okay, the second one will be the, the multiplication rule. So that's probability of C and D is equal to the probability of C times the probability of, make sure you get the right order here. Uh, the way I remember it is that it's going to alternate. So C, D given C. Okay, so C, D, C, so it alternates. And then the third one I need is the multiplication rule again, but with the C's and D swapped. So in the, in the other order. That's gonna say D and C is equal to the probability of, it's gonna be D, and then make sure you get the correct order here. It's gonna alternate, so probability of D times the probability of C given D. So make sure you have um, the second and third formulas, make sure you have the correct orders on the right side. Part A, uh, find probability of C and D. Okay, so look for the equation that has C and D's in them. 
I see it right there in the first one. I see it in the second one. And I also see it in the third one because for ands, the order doesn't matter. So D and C is the same thing as C and D. So I see them in all three equations. Which equation do we use? And remember, to use an equation, you have to know everything else, okay? So question or equation one, the C and D is right here. In order to use that first equation, I need to know these other things. Do I know everything else? Do I know probability of D? Yes, 0.6. Do I know probability of C? Yes, 0.8. Do I know C or D? Yes, it's 0.92. Okay, so one is gonna be good. Equation one is gonna be good because I know everything else. So let's use equation one. And then you'll see that for the other ones, you can't use them because there's, there's something that you don't know in each of those formulas. So the only one that's gonna work in this situation is gonna be equation one. So let me recopy that. C or D equals probability of C plus probability of D minus probability of C and D. Okay, go through and uh, plug in numbers. The left side here, C or D. Do I know C or D? I do, it's 0.92. So that entire thing is 0.92. I have an equals right here. Probability of C, do I know that? Yes, it's 0.8. Plus, probability of D, do I know that? Yes, it's 0.6. Minus, probability of C and D, do I know that? Uh, no, that's actually what I'm trying to find. So let me call that X. And now our job is to get that X by itself. So the X currently has this 0.8 and this 0.6, so I need to actually get rid of those. Uh, but first, let me clean up both sides first. Left side is just the 0.92, so I don't need to clean that up. Right side, I can clean it up by just combining those, 0 0.8 plus 0 0.6. What's 0 0.8 plus 0 0.6? One point four. And now I want to get rid of this point one point four. So right now it's being added to this negative uh, negative x. So to undo an addition, you're going to subtract both sides. So subtract. Left side point nine two minus one point four. negative 0 0.48 equals on the right side the 1.4 minus 1.4 those will cancel out and then you're left with minus x so negative 0.48 is negative x I don't want negative x I want regular x So if negative 0.48 is negative x, then regular x is going to be 0.48. Um, or you can just divide both sides by negative one, that will also get rid of the negative. Okay, x is 0.48. So we just found p of c and d is 0.48. Very good. Part B, probability of C given D. Okay, so conditional probability, one with the line, one with the word given, the order does matter. So look for C given D in our formulas in that specific order, C given D. Formula one doesn't have C given D. Formula two has D given C, that's the wrong order. Formula three does have C given D in that exact order. So we're gonna use formula three. So let me recopy it. Probability of D and C equals probability of D times probability of C given D. Okay, go through, plug in numbers. Left side, probability D and C. D and C Remember, and the order doesn't matter. So D and C is actually the same thing as C and D, which we know is 0.48. Equals 
equals probability of D. D we know from the original question, it's 0.6, times probability of C given D. That's actually what I'm looking for. So that's just going to be regular X. Get the X by itself. Uh, right now, there's a 0.6 multiplying the X. To get rid of a multiplication, you divide. You do the opposite. So divide both sides by 0.6. And then left side, 0.48 divided by 0 0.6, 0 0.8. On the right side, the 0 0.6 divided by 0.6, that will cancel each other out, and you just get x. So that's our answer. Uh, let me write down what we just found, though. We just found this, probably a C given D. And we found that that was 0.8. C, probability D given C, so conditional probability order matters. So look for D given C in that exact order. And that will appear right there in equation two. So we're gonna use equation two. I'm going to recopy it, probably with C and D equals. Probability of C times probability of D given C. Go through, plug in numbers. Probably with C and D, where is that? Right there, 0.48 equals probability of C. Right there, 0.8 times probability of D given C. That's actually what I'm looking for. So that's going to be my X. Get the X by itself. Um, right now, there's only a 0.8 multiplying it, so get rid of the 0.8. To get rid of the 0.8, which is currently multiplying, you do the opposite, which is divide. Divide both sides by 0.8. Okay, so I'm going to spill over onto the next part here. Left side, 0.48 divided by 0 0.8. 0 0.6. Equals on the right side, multiplying by 0 0.8 and then dividing by 0 0.8, that's going to cancel each other out, and you'll just get regular x. And so what did, what did we just find? We just found this, probably d given c. So probably d given c is, we said, 0 0.6. Part d. Are C and D mutually exclusive? Okay, that means we're gonna check one of the equations on the front page. So mutually exclusive is which equation? This one. So probability of A and B is equal to zero. And then for this question, since we're talking about C's and D's, let me replace the A with C and the B with D. Okay, check left, check right, and check whether or not they're equal. Left side, C and D. C and D, we found already, right there, it's 0.48. Right side, Right side, there's nothing to do. Right side is just zero, so right side is zero. Are they equal? They're not. So they're not equal, which means this is going to be not. This one's asking about mutually exclusive, so this one will be not mutually exclusive. E. Are C and D independent? So this one we're gonna check 
this one should actually say we're, we're checking that. Yeah, anytime I'm asking about independent or mutually exclusive, I want you to check one of the equations up on the front page. We're talking about independent, so we're checking this one. Probability of A equals probably A given B. And then because we're talking about C's and D's in this uh, question, I'm going to replace the A with a C and the B with a D. And then we'll check the left, check the right. Left is probably of C. Okay, that should be something either in the original question or something we found already. Probably of C. 0.8. Right side, probably of C given D. Where have we seen probably of C given D? Right there, 0.8. Are they equal? Yes. So if they are equal, then it's a yes. To answer the question here, yes, they are independent. Example four. At a certain college, 80% of students take statistics and 36% of students take economics. Given that students take statistics, 30% of these students take economics. Part A, let S be the event that a student takes statistics, let E be the event that a student takes economics. Summarize in symbols the probabilities described above. And the symbols I'm looking for are things like in the previous examples. P of G equals 0.45, P of H equals 0.15. Okay, so we're told that 80% of students take statistics. So the probability of getting someone who takes statistics, and S stands for statistics, is 80%. Now, anytime we're going to be doing any computation, uh, we need to convert the percents back to decimals. So 80% as a decimal, so just move the decimal two to the left, that's 0.80. Thirty-six percent of students take economics. Okay, E stands for economics, so we're saying that the probability of getting someone who takes economics is thirty-six percent. Okay, as a decimal, move decimal two to the left. 0.36. And then we have a last probability, which is thirty um, percent. As a decimal, that's going to be 0 0.30. Now, what is this last? probability. Given that a student takes st statistics, 30% of these students take economics. Okay, I see the word given. That automatically tells me that this is going to be a conditional probability, which means it's going to be something given something. Now the question is, is it S given E or is it E given S? Okay, remember that in the symbol, the second part is the given. So in this sentence, what's the given? Given statistics. Okay, so statistics is the given part that goes second, which means the E goes first. So be careful with the order there. So S is second because it's the given part, and in, that, in my sentence here it says given statistics. So statistics is the given part, it goes in the second slot. Now once you have these written out, this becomes just like the uh, previous two examples where we're going to use those three formulas. So let me write down those three formulas. Okay, so the first one involves um, the OR. Okay, so I'm going to write them using S and E. Okay, so I'm going to replace A with S and B with E. So the first one is the addition rule, which is S or E equals P of S plus P of E minus the AND, S and E. Okay, second formula is the multiplication rule. So that has to do with the AND. 
And then the order here is going to be be an S. So it starts the same. And then I just have to remember that it, it alternates. So it's going to be E given S. Okay, alternates S, E, S. And then the third one is the same as uh, the second one, except I'm going to uh, swap that S and E, the two letters. So this will say E and S equals, this will now say E, and then it alternates also, so E, S, given E. Okay, so those are my three, three formulas. And then the rest of these questions, um, I should be able to answer using one of those formulas. Part B, find a probability that a randomly selected student does not take economics. So I lied. This one does not use one of those. So we're looking at not economics, so not E, okay, which is the same thing as, remember, not is complement. And then the, the complement rule says that probability of a complement is just one minus the probability of regular. So this is just going to be one minus the probability of E. What's the probability of E? 0.36. So 1 minus 0.36. 0 0.64. To find the probability of a complement, just do 1 minus the probability of the regular uh, event. Part C. Find a probability that a randomly selected student takes statistics and takes economics. Keyword is here is and, so I'm looking for probability of statistics and economics, which is going to be S and E. Okay, which equation am I going to use? So which equation has S and E in them? I see it right there in equation one, but can I use equation one? So in order to use the equation, I have to know everything else. I'm looking for S and E. I would need P of S, P of E, and P of S or E. I have P of S, it's 0.8. I have P of E, it's 0.36. Do I have S or E? I don't, which means I can't use equation one. What about equation two? S and E is right here, so I need to know the other two. P of S, I do know. E given S. I actually do know, 0 0.30. So I do know everything um, I need for using equation two. So let's use equation two. So if I recopy that, that's S times P of E given S. All right, go through and plug in the numbers. Left side, S and E, that's actually what I'm looking for. So I actually don't need to do anything there. Right side, P of S, P of S, 0 0.80. So that entire thing is 0 0.80 times E given S. Probably E given S, that whole thing is going to be 0 0.30. Then let me actually do this. That's, how, that's what I'm looking for. Let me call that X. Your goal is to get the X by itself. It's already by itself on the left side, which means all I need to do is the right side, 0 0.80 times 0 0.30, 0 0.24. And what I just found was probably of S and E. So probably of S and E. Zero point two four. Part D, find a probability that a randomly selected person takes statistics or takes economics. Okay, keyword there is or. In symbols, I'm looking for probability of statistics, which is S, or probability of economics, which is E. Okay, which equation am I using? So which one has S or E? There's only one that has S or E, which is the first one right there. So I have to use this first one, so let's recopy this. S or E equals probability of S plus probability of E 
minus the and, which is S and E. Okay, go through, plug in stuff. S or E, that's actually what I'm looking for. So let me call that X, which are equals, probability of S, it's right there, 0 0.80. There's a plus, probability of E, 0.36, minus probability of S and E. We actually just found that S and E is 0.24. Get the X by itself. X is already by itself, so we're good. And all I need to do is the right side, so 0.80, plus 0.36, minus 0.24. 0 0.92. Okay, and so what I just found was the OR. So probably of S or E. Is 0.92. Part E, find a probability that a randomly selected student takes statistics given that the student takes economics. All right, so I see the word given. That means that this is going to be a conditional probability. So it's going to be something given something. And remember, the, uh, the second slot is the given part. So are we looking for S given E or E given S. So given economics. So economics is the given part. So that goes right here, which means the S goes here. So we're looking for probably of S given E. Looking at our equations, which one has S given E in that order? Because for conditional probability, the order matters. So S given E. S given E. Third equation, right there. Okay, so let me recopy this third equation, probably of E and S. Equals probability of E times the probability of S given E. Go through, plug in numbers. Left side, E and S. Uh, e and S, do we know E and S? Yes, remember, uh, for ands, the order does not matter. So E and S is the same thing as S and E. It's 0.24. So this entire thing on the left side is 0.24. There's an equals there, probably of E. Probably of E, 0.36. So the times there, S given E, that's actually what I'm looking for. So I'm going to call that entire thing X. And then our job is to get the x by itself. Um, right now it's being multiplied by the 0.36. To get rid of that multiplication, you uh, do the opposite, which is divide. Divide by 0.36. Left side, 0.24 divided by Round to three decimal places, this is 0 0.667. Let me write in red. On the right side, 0.36 divided by 0.36 will cancel out, leaving just x. And that's our answer. So we just found probability of s given e is 0 0.667. Determine if the events taking statistics, taking economics are independent. So whenever I'm asking about independent or mutually exclusive, I want you to check one of the equations on the front page. So which one are we looking at? We're talking about independent. Independent would be this one. So probability of A equals probability of A given B. So probability of A equals probability of A given B. So that's what we're checking. 
In this problem, we're talking about S and E. So let me replace the A with S and the B with E. And then all we need to do is check the left side, check the right side, and see if they're equal. Left side, probably with S. What is probably with S? Just regular S is 0 0.80. On the right side, S given E, we actually just found it, 0.667. Are they equal? They're not equal, okay? So to answer the question, they're not independent. Part G, determine if the events, taking statistics, taking economics are mutually exclusive. Okay, I'm asking about mutually exclusive. That means I want you to check one of the equations on the front page. This one's asking about mutually exclusive. The equation to check for mutually exclusive is this one, uh, probably A and B equals zero. And then in this question, we're talking about instead of A's and B's, we're talking about S's and E's. So uh, probably S and E equals zero. Check left, check right, and check if they're equal. Left side, S and E. We found that somewhere. What is probably of S and E? S and E, right there, S and E is 0.24. That's left side. Right side, there's nothing to do because it's just zero. So right side, zero. Are they equal? Obviously not, they're not equal, which means to answer the question, are they mutually exclusive? They're, they are not. So not mutually exclusive. Example five, at a school, 83% of all students carry a backpack, 64% of all students bring their lunch, 89% of all students carry a backpack or bring their lunch or both. Part A, let B be the event that a student carries a backpack, let L be the event that a student brings their lunch, summarize in symbols the probabilities described above. Okay, so the first one I need to translate is the 83%. Um, 83% as a decimal, so move the decimal point two to the left, that's 0.83, so 0 0.83. And that was the probability that a student carries a backpack. And backpack was B here. Next one, 64% of all students bring their lunch. Uh, lunch was L, probably of getting someone who brings their lunch is 64%. Uh, as a decimal, move the decimal point two to the left, 0.64. Then the last probability is 89% as a decimal would be 0 0.89. And what is that? So 89% of all students carry a backpack or bring their lunch or both. Okay, so keyword is or. Um, so or both is actually included in an or. So 0.89 is the probability of backpack or lunch. So B or L. Okay. So once I have this, uh, I'm gonna use those three equations that we've been talking about, and I'm gonna rewrite them using B's and L's. Okay, so the addition rule with B's and L's is gonna say probability B or L equals probability of B plus probability L, and then minus the probability of B and L. Second equation I need is the multiplication rule. Uh, multiplication rule is the one for n, so b and l equals, it's gonna start the same, so probability b times probability of, and make sure you get this order correct, uh, the way I remember it is it alternates, so b, l given b. And then the third one is the same 
multiplication rule, uh, except you swap the B's and L's. So this one would say probability of L and B equals probability of, this would now say L, times the probability of B given L. Okay, make sure it alternates, so L, B, L. Part B, find a probability that a randomly selected student does not bring their lunch. So I'm looking for not lunch, so not L, which is really just, number not is complement. I'm looking for L complement. To find L complement, you're just gonna do one minus the regular event. So one minus the probability of L. So one minus, what's the probability of L? 0.64. So one minus 0.64. Zero point three six. So if you know that the probability of someone bringing their lunch is 0.64, to get the probability that they don't bring their lunch, just do one minus it, 0.36. Part C, find a probability that a randomly selected student carries a backpack and brings their lunch. Keyword there is and. So I'm looking for probability of backpack and lunch. Backpack and lunch. Which equation am I gonna use? So I'm looking for equations that have B and L in them. I see one right there. I see one right there. And then um, for ands, the order does not matter. So that, that counts too. Which one's gonna work? So in order to use an equation, we have to know everything else. Uh, B and L is right here. In order to use this equation, I need to know the other three things. So B, L, and then B or L. Do I know B or L? Yes. Do I know probability of B? Yes. Do I know probability of L? Yes. Okay, so equation one works here. So let me recopy that. And let's go through and um, plug in numbers. Probability of B or L, we know, is 0.89. So that entire thing is 0.89. There's an equals here. Probability of B, we also know, that's 0.83. There's a plus. Probability of L, 0.64 minus probability of B and L. That's actually what I'm looking for. So let me call it X. Our job is to get the X by itself. Okay, so right now I need to get rid of these, these two things. Um, let me clean up left, clean up right before we move on. Left side, 0.89. Right side, I can combine those. So 0.83 plus 0.64 is 1.47. And then I have this minus x. To get, uh, get the x by itself, I need to get rid of this 1.47. Right now, it's being added to the minus x. So to undo an addition, you're going to do the opposite, which is subtract. So subtract 1.47 from both sides. And I'm gonna spill over to the next one. So minus 1.47, minus 1.47. Left side, 0.89 minus 1.47. So 0.89 minus 1.47. That's a negative 0.58. equals right side 1.47 minus 1.47 will cancel each other out and you're left with just negative x. Um, I'm looking for regular x, not minus x, but if I know that negative 0.58 is negative x, then I know regular x should be 0 0.58 without the negative sign. 
Okay, so what did I just find? I just found the x, which is the n. So I'm the, I just found p of n, b n, b, p of b and l is 0 0.58. Okay, so that was part C. Part D, find a probability that a randomly selected student carries a backpack given that the student brings their lunch. Okay, so given. So this is going to be a conditional probability. So I'm looking for something given something. Backpack given lunch. So this is a, the given part is the second slot. So given lunch, so that goes there, backpack goes there. So backpack given lunch. I'm looking for probability B given L in that order. So which one has B given L? Which equation has B given L in that order? That's right there. Equation three. So let me recopy that. It's a probability of L and B equals probability of L times probability of B given L. Go through, plug in numbers. Left side probability of L and B do we know that? So remember I said the and, the order does not matter. So L and B is the same thing as B and L. And B and L, we actually know, is 0.58 equals probability of L. I should know that. That's 0.64. Times B given L, that's actually what I'm, what I'm looking for here. Let me call that X. Our job is to get the X by itself. So we just have to get rid of this 0.64. This 0.64 is currently multiplying. To undo and multiply, you divide the opposite. So you divide by 0.64. Left side, 0.58 divided by 0.64. Uh, round it to three decimal places. This is 0 0.906. On the right side, 0.64 divided by 0.64 will cancel out, leaving just an X. And that's our answer. So what is this answer? This answer was the probability of B given L. So probability of B given L is 0 0.906. Part E, find a probability that a randomly selected student brings their lunch, given that the student brings a backpack. Keyword there is the word given. So this is a conditional probability, so we're looking for something given something. Lunch given backpack. So that would be L given backpack. So looking at my, my three equations, which one has L given backpack? Uh, in that order, because conditional probability, the order does matter. So L given backpack in that order. L given backpack. I see it right there. So equation two. Okay, so let me recopy equation two. That's probability of B and L. Equals probability of B times probability of L given B. Go through, uh, plug in numbers. Probability of B and L. I should know that somewhere. So B and L, we found it somewhere. Right there, B and L, 0.58. So equals probability of B, I should also know that. Right there, 0.83. times probability of L given B. That's actually what I'm looking for, so let me call that X. And then our job is to get the X by itself. Right now, it's being multiplied by 0.83. To undo a multiplication, you're going to do the opposite, which is divide by 0 0.83. 0 0.58 divided by 0.83. So 
0 0.699. That's left side, right side, 0.83 divided by 0.83 will cancel out, leaving just an X, which is our answer. So what is this answer? It was probably of L given B. 0 0.699. F. Determine if the events carrying a backpack and bringing a lunch are mutually exclusive. So anytime I'm talking about mutually exclusive or independent, I'm asking you to check one of the equations on the front page. Okay, so which one are we checking? This one or this one? We're asking about mutually exclusive which would be this one. So probably of A and B equals zero. And then because for this problem, we're talking about B's and L's, right, B's and L's, let me replace the A with B and the B with L. So this will say probability of B and L equals zero. Check left, check right, and then check if they're equal. Left side probability of B and L that we should have somewhere already. Right there, B and L, 0.58. B and L, 0.58. Right side, there's nothing to do, it's just zero. Are they equal? No, they're not. So they're not equal, that means to answer the question, uh, this is not mutually ex exclusive. G, determine if the events carrying a backpack and bringing lunch are independent. So independent, we're checking the other equation. Independent, P of A equals P of A given B. Okay, so this question we're talking about backpacks and lunches, so that's B's and L's. Uh, I'm going to replace the A's with B's and then the B with L. All right, check left, check right, and then check if they're equal. Probability of B. Uh, B would be 0.83. On the right side, B given L. B given L, that's not it, that's in the wrong order. That's not what I want. B given L, right there, 0 0.906. That was from part D. Are they equal? Nope, they're not equal. So our conclusion would be that they are not, this one's talking about independent, so they're not, uh, they're not independent. All right, have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.